Welcome to Happy Today podcast. This is a podcast for those who want to improve service experience of internal services. If you use ServiceNow or other enterprise service management system, then this is for you. So welcome to episode one of uh, Happy Today podcast. So today we are going to talk about employee experience in ITSM and what it is. But first, maybe a little introduction. So uh, my name is Pasi Nikkanen. I'm the chief product officer at Happy Signals. And joined to me today is our CEO, Sami Kallio. Hi. Hi, Sami here. Uh, nice to be here and start this trial of podcast. I hope you enjoy. I think we have a lot of things to tell you guys and talk about. Uh, haven't had time to do this before. So excited to try this new media for us. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I think the topic uh, in this episode was to talk about a little bit like, why do we do what we do? What is our passion? And what do we really mean about employee experience in the context of uh, service management? So maybe Sami, uh, since you're the founder of the company, maybe you can uh, tell a little bit of the history, like uh, how, how this thing got started. Yeah, it was like, Four years ago, a bit more, that we were doing a service design for a certain company, how they should do, do serve their customers really in IT service management in a new way. We haven't didn't cut any limitation of what we were able to do or what we were asked to do. We interviewed about 100 people to find out what they love and what they hate in, in this industry or, or the service management and in IT support and whatever terms they would use for it. The point in doing that was that when we were doing it, I was all the time thinking that this is not just problems in this one company. What the employees were talking about were kind of an industry thinking, kind of, they didn't trust IT, it was a black hole. They didn't really know what to do differently and they were avoiding using the service desk. And so I was thinking all the time that now what we are now solving is not something that is only this company. And and after that, I resigned from my role at that time and I went to interview 10 different companies to find out what, what they felt about it and, and do they really agree that the problems were there were the same in their organization and, and it was quite clear after that that there is a need need for having a company like us. Yeah. So uh, what were the things that uh, came up with the, with the interviews and uh, what did you find on, on customer satisfaction or, or SLAs or that yeah. kind of things? So it, it was really interesting. All these companies, 10 companies, they were having CSAT at some level and some point. Uh, and they, most of them were using outsourced service desk provider. And what I found out that almost everybody was using scale one to five. And every time I asked what they know about it, they said that our CSAT is 3.7. And that really was almost each every case. And then they asked me that, is this a good or not? And I said, I don't have an idea. But then I asked them, what do you know about this number? And the only thing they knew about it was that this has always been the same. And it took me at least five, six interviews when I realized that I have to ask the question that is that the figure that you have in that outsourced agreement as the minimum level? And, and that was the case. So the kind of the agreements were running the business. So if you met that target, you kind of thought that now we are in a good level. Yeah. Or it, even though they didn't know if they are on a good level. So that was kind of the question to me that, okay, this is something that we have said to be okay or good level, but we don't know. And I think, uh, no, but we are at your home and you have that watermelon yeah. there. Yeah. So that is the metaphor for exactly this thing here. So it is easy from our perspective. And when we have interviewed people, it is quite easy to get the so-called traditional SLAs to be in green or be okay. So when you are having a meeting with CIO and the provider, it kind of feels that, okay, everything should be okay, but still simultaneously you are hearing complaints and, and, and bad feedback from business units and employees mm -hmm. that you are not serving them and, and really doing it for their, their purpose. So we are using this metaphor for watermelon. So, so what is the watermelon? Why is it, why is it watermelon? <laughs> because it's, it's green outside and red inside. So that's kind of the, the feeling there, what, what we, we heard from every company. So that's, that's why we are using that in our right. branding so, as well. So the green one is the SLAs that, that you get green yeah. and red are actually the employees that are complaining on the corridors. And that's the thing. So yeah. we yeah. help you to slice, the, <laughs> slice yeah. the watermelon or something. Yeah. And I think it's really easy. I mean, if you, if you have an SLA that, Hey, okay, let's try to now we have a contract at 3.7. Yeah. So let's get to that. So you to do all kinds of things, like you start to 
filter feedbacks out of the equation that you feel that are not uh, uh, aligned with the contract. So all the things that you're doing, it's just to get to that number 3.7. So what do we then mean with the employee experience? Because uh, I think uh, what you should really be driving after is to try to improve and understand what is the experience of the services for the employees. And now people are just talking about the contracts. So what do you think? Uh, is it is the employee experience only about happiness or, or how do you see it? Uh, it is not re really only about happiness because there is um, clear proving in our benchmark that if you have a high level of happiness in your end user in service management, you will lose less time from end users per ticket. And that is something that we have been measuring now for three years. And, and if you are having a really good results, you are only losing per incident one hour from the business unit's end user's time. But if you are having really bad service experience, you are losing even seven and a half hours. So there is huge, huge difference with the perception of lost work time in end user side. So it is, yes, our brand is pink and, and hard and, and happiness and all that, but there really is a business case in, in, in focusing on the end user experience. So what we try to help enterprises to do is, is the whole industry has been forced, I would say forced to cut cost and only focus on the IT internal efficiency. Uh, and that has been going in some cases too far. So optimizing only that will end up in a situation that the end users are losing more time. I don't mean that the self-healing tools and that kind of stuff would be bad. Of course, they are good mm -hmm. knowledge bases and that, but you have to have good tools and good connection and good services for end users to make them happy. Yeah. But I also have to say that in this industry, on overall, we should be proud because even the lowest scores that we have measured are quite high because we are using the same metrics that Net Promoter Score, which is the most used uh, consumer metrics. You all know the question, would you recommend? And we have been using the same mathematics yeah. from the beginning. But the point is that the, the lowest scores that we measure are about 40. I have never seen a consumer teleoperator company on that level. So all companies we are measuring are better than any teleoperators in the world. Okay, that's not maybe a high target, sorry, teleoperators, but that's that's kind of the situation. And the highest that we are measuring are about 80. And that is the same level that let's say Apple was a few years back. I think they are even lower than that nowadays. Yeah. So in overall, IT servicemen should be proud and show that to the business units that yes, there are cases that we are doing badly and there are exceptions, but on overall, we are doing really well. So yeah. congratulations guys for, yeah. for what you have done to your end users. Yeah. And I guess uh, since the topic was like employee experience in the, in the world of ITSM, so why is it important? I think we have seen this growth when we started the company, it was like everybody was confusing employee experience with the HR, the employee engagement and that kind of yeah. things. And I think last year it was Forbes that said that, you know, 2018 was the year of the employee experience. And they were saying that the reason is that that when, when you're competing in the customer side with the customer experience, it's like the, the last place where you can find this advantage is, is to actually focus on your employees. And, uh, and we are really focusing on the services that the employees are using at the work, not on the cultural things like how many perks and parties you're getting, uh, not on the how, how nice the walls are like the Google offices, but actually the services that you're using with your devices and uh, you're us using with finance or HR or whatever. So I think that's also like a really good point to bring out. Uh, sometimes you hear that, that the IT guys are saying they're talking with the HR and the HR just saying that, no, this is our thing. You know, employee experience is nothing to do with IT, but that is, I think, totally wrong. It should be an enterprise wide thing to actually measure and, and develop. But, but as you already noticed, and I think, I think you have also noticed that the, the whole industry during the four years has changed really, really much in, in kind of a, how much we appreciate end user experience. I think you remember in Seed's first year, yeah. it was about 50% is for all people we talked to in our booth were saying that they are not at all interested in employee experience. And that yeah. was kind of a, we were almost closing up the company after that one. Some people even saying that end users will always complain, I'm not interested. Yeah. And that is exactly wording for many people. Now, last year, a totally different thing. And, and every year after that, more and more interesting people, people interested in this area. And I think that's 
okay, Forbes service now talking about era of experiences and, and so on. So there is a huge change also with the not only happy signals, but the bigger providers talking about. Yeah, the, I was just looking the at, the, at the knowledge uh, event this year uh, and there was like 60% of all the all the sessions were mentioning employee experience or yeah. customer experience. So I think it's really, really the topic that is now really hot and, uh, and making yeah. us happy. We're well, making <laughs> us really happy on that, on that. So uh, what would you say is that uh, what should somebody do if they now feel that listening to this, that, hey, yeah, we, yeah, we really need to do this or, or we, we, we should really look into this, this employee experience part. And, and this is what I've been saying. So how should they start tackling? What, what should they do? Yeah, I think the, the main big, big problem behind the scenes is, is, is the SLAs and, and the KPIs, how you measure this industry and how you really measure your partner's success. But still, I wouldn't start from changing that because that is so huge change and, and that needs first kind of a, some cultural change steps before you are able to really do that end. But I would really concentrate on starting to measure really end user experience and, and from end user side kind of experience side, not, not your processes, because sometimes we see that even though you kind of measure the end user satisfaction, you are asking questions that are really about your processes. So really focus on understanding what your end users feel, not only just measure them continuously, but interview them. I've been so frustrated when talking with people who are consultants in this area, consulting end user uh, corporations about end user experience. And then you realize and ask them that, have you ever interviewed any one-to-one -one interviews? And they say, no. And I thought, how can you then think about it from their perspective? So two things, start to measure the kind of quality overall, and then do and interview normal people, not IT people, but normal people from the enterprises. So you will get the kind of the, what they really do when they have an incident or request. And well, I think that's a good way to kick off our, our podcast series. So that was the episode one. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to learn more, you can go to our website at happysignals.com. And uh, I think in the next episode, let's see, we'll talk about a little bit on the motivation of the agents. Uh, why is this also really important for the services people? Yeah, thank you. Thank you.